How to Be an Anti-Racist was very difficult for me to write because I had so many personal stories. And, and one of the personal stories, uh, and I don't want to say this, but I'm going to have to say it, it's in the book, so people are going to read it, is when I was in college, I thought that my eyes were too dark. And so I decided to get color contacts. Um, and they were these honey contacts. And my friends would joke on me that I had orange eyes. But I thought with these honey contacts that I was more beautiful, that I looked better, that I was more attractive. And, and this was a representation of, of, of what I uh, sort of address in the book is known as colorism, right? This idea that the lighter the skin, the better. The lighter the eyes, the better. The straighter the hair, the better. And within communities of color, there are, of course, gradations of skin color, of, of eye color, of, of hair texture. And, and so what I did in that— And it often that, changes from generation to generation. Precisely, precisely. And, and what I did in that, in that chapter of, of called Color was sort of talk about what I called light people and dark people. And, and this is particularly within communities of color. And, and we have been led to believe, primarily taught to people of color by white people who said, since lighter people are closer to us, they're more superior to those dark people. And we've internalized those ideas. And, and there's also a set of policies that actually favor lighter people over darker people. So I talked about all of the disparities between light people and dark people. And an anti-racist does not view lighter people or even darker people as better or worse than each each other. Which is the perfect time to bring in um, one of the great writers of the 20th century, Toni Morrison, who we just lost last week. Last week on Democracy Now!, we did an hour, two hours, one hour on the show and one hour off with Nikki Giovanni and Angela Davis and Sonia Sanchez playing the clips of Toni Morrison. And we want to go back to one of those moments, as you describe, wanting lighter eyes, Ibram. Let's go to 2010 a conversation between Toni Morrison and Angela Davis at the New York Public Library. When I wrote the first book I wrote, The Bluest Eye, I really wanted to know why that girl felt so bad, the one who, a real-life girl, who said she wanted blue eyes. We were talking about the, whether God existed. I, of course, was persuaded that he did, and she was persuaded that he did not, and her proof was that she had prayed for blue eyes for two years. Two years? And she didn't get them, though obviously he wasn't up there. But when I looked at her and thought about how awful she would look, <laughs> if she got them. And then I thought the second thing was how beautiful she was at that moment, you know, she was just incredible. But I didn't even know whether she was beautiful or not until I thought about what she might think. Then the third thing, of course, is why does she want that? You know, what, what makes her think that's an improvement? And that kind of self-loathing, which is real, you know, in, when you don't have any support, made me, you know, think of that as a, as a real subject for a book not some oh victim, but really how it works. So that's Toni Morrison. Um, there's so much to follow up on here, um, from when did you finally take off those contacts to the effect of Toni Morrison in your life. So I, I finally took them off, I believe, around the time I locked my hair, uh, when I was a, a junior in college. And I remember a few years later reading The Bluest Eye for the first time. In many ways, I could not read about that little girl without thinking about myself, without thinking about that first time I put on these, these honey contacts, that I thought it was an improvement, that, that I thought I was handsome, um, and how long it took me to realize that I was actually more handsome without the orange eyes, as my friends would, would, would joke on me. And, and so I think, you know, obviously, Toni Morrison, like, Meaning any sort of black writer living has had a tremendous um, impact on my life, um, on my personal life, let alone my sort of literary life. And, and I think one of the ways in which she had an influence, even on me writing this book, even on me writing the colorism sort of chapter, was her constant sort of 
instructions to black writers to not write with the white critic on our shoulders, to not write with the white gaze in our minds. Because one of the things that we have been, it's difficult for us to write about, is internalized racism. Because what we fear is going to happen is white racists are going to take that and see, we've been telling you you're the problem all along, right? And now you're finally admitting it. And, and so for me, I was like, let me get the white critic off my shoulder and write. This is a reality that, it, that people of color, particularly black people, are, are, are facing, and I wanted to speak to it.